Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis one more time. Today we'll continue our discussion of osteoarthritis. In the previous video we had an introduction. Today we'll talk about the definition, the etiology, and the epidemiology of osteoarthritis. By the way, I am working on three playlists at the same time. The first one is bleeding and coagulation disorders. The second one is fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base disturbance. The third one is this, called rheumatology. If you haven't heard of this channel before, welcome to the tribe. With that being said, now let's get started. You can get a case and answer and explanation to the case sent to your email every week and as I mentioned, it's free. You can go to patreon.com forward slash metacosis and follow me there. If you understand something about cars, your information will be invaluable for osteoarthritis. If you know what's the engine oil, how to replace tires, and how to align the wheels. Not how to, but the concept behind them. And you know the odometer that counts your kilometers or your miles. Osteoarthritis is a piece of cake because in large, it's a mechanical wear and tear. What's the difference between non-inflammatory arthritis, such as osteo, and inflammatory arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis? Okay, this is mechanical. It's non-inflammatory. Do you have cardinal signs of inflammation? It's not going to happen, baby. Okay, how about inflammatory? You will have the cardinal signs of inflammation. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functulescent. If it's non-inflammatory, it's mechanical, it's asymmetrical because you do not wear the tires on your car at the same rate. Some of them will wear faster than the others because it's a purely mechanical thing. If you are sitting in the driver's seat and it's on the left, your left front tire is going to wear faster than the others, roughly speaking. On the other hand, inflammatory arthritis is asymmetrical arthritis because O2 antibodies do not discriminate. Mechanical problems are worse in the evening because you have been moving throughout the day and at the end of the day you have more movement, more movement, more movement, more wear and tear, more pain. Inflammatory arthritis is worse in the morning because as the day progresses you are washing out the inflammatory debris, improving your symptoms. In non-inflammatory arthritis, the, C the ESR and CRP are within normal limit because it's a non-inflammatory arthritis. So osteoarthritis is a wrong name. We should call it osteoarthropathy, but no one listens to me anymore. On the other hand, inflammatory ESR and CRP are increased because these are inflammatory markers. You want something else? Ferritin is going to be high. Ferritin is going to be high. Why? Because it's an acute phase reactant. And in case of rheumatoid arthritis, it's an inflammatory arthritis. And sometimes it can have acute flares. Osteoarthritis is by and large a biomechanical disease. It's not inflammatory. Therefore, no cardinal signs of inflammation. Therefore, no constitutional symptoms. Therefore, joint pain worsens with use. As the day progresses, you get more pain and it's worse in the evening. Non-inflammatory, therefore asymmetric. Non-inflammatory, therefore, no elevation of ESR or CRP. You have normal ESR, normal CRP, normal CBC, and normal CMP. Osteoarthritis is a disease of the elderly, especially primary osteo. Osteoarthritis is by far the most common type of joint disease. It's biomechanical, it's non-inflammatory, therefore, it affects the weight-bearing joint. To talk about the big things, the knees, the hips, etc. And you're more likely to get it on the lower extremity because the lower extremities are carrying your entire freaking weight. And you're eating McDonald's every day. Stop it. It's a biomechanical problem, therefore obesity is a risk factor. Trauma is a risk factor. Manual occupations, manual labor is a risk factor. It's chronic, insidious disease. Because it's biomechanical. Therefore, if you want to find some white blood cells in the knee joint, they are predominantly lymphocytes, not neutrophils, because it's a chronic problem. Joint fluid analysis, white blood cells, more than 200 but less than 2000 because still it's non-inflammatory morning stiffness for less than 30 minutes no sign of itis because there is no acute systemic inflammation or chronic systemic inflammation or any systemic inflammation osteoarthritis especially primary osteoarthritis is a disease of the elderly your chances of getting osteoarthritis shoots as you get older they grow exponentially 
Let's talk about bones. They have type 1 collagen. We have two types of bones, lamellar and woven. We don't care about woven right now because they are either immature or pathological. Let's talk about the lamellar bone, strong. We have two types, compact or cortical bone that provides strength. And they are here. Why here? Because this is the most weight bearing area of your bone. Get your head out of your sphincter. Then we have cancellous or trabecular bone provides flexibility. You'll find them here. They are more flexible because they need to come in contact with the soft, smooth, flexible cartilage and they will need to form some joints. Got it. Okay, sorry. The cartilage is not soft. The cartilage is firm. And firm is something in between soft and hard. Firm is something in the middle. This describes cartilage. This describes bone. And this describes your nice, beautiful cheeks. Cartilage has type 2 collagen. We have hyaline cartilage, white fiber cartilage, yellow or elastic cartilage. Cartilage consists of extracellular matrix, which is made of collagen type 2, and ground substance, and cells which produce the matrix. Where do you think the matrix come from? Of course, from the cells. We have the old, wise chondroplasts, and these young guys in their 20s called chondrocytes. They are immature and they are just whining and complaining all the time. God help us. Let's talk about joints, also known as syndesmology. This is old school right there. If you know that the study of joints is called syndesmology, maybe you shouldn't be watching these videos. I should be learning from you. Let's break this down. Ology means the study of. Syn. Syn means the same. That's why Dropbox will synchronize for you. Sen means the same. Chrono means time. So at the same time you update the thing on your phone, it's updated on your computer. It's magic. Shame on you if you synchronize your files without even knowing what the word mean. Shame on you. That's why when we discuss cardiology in the future, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about the positive chronotropic and the negative chronotropic. And by the way, Diseases are divided into acute and chronic, because chronic, they take time. What does dismo mean? Dismo means band, or like a kind of a ligament, or a bond, or a fastening together. So, same, bring them together, that's the definition of a joint, because you bring two bones together. Fibrous joints, fibrocartilaginous joints, and synovial joints. Fibrous provide no movement whatsoever. You can describe it as minimal, but I prefer none. We call them synarthroses, such as the sutures in your skull. Bone and bone, no cartilage in between. They are almost in contact. Okay, what does synarthroses mean? Okay, syn means the same. Arthro means joint. So same joint because they are kind of a continuum or the same bone. They are connected. Next, we have fibrocartilaginous joints. They provide limited movement, such as the pubic symphysis, formerly known as the symphysis pubis, intervertebral disc, costochondral junction, and sacroiliac junction. You have two bones and you have a nice, tough, elastic fiber cartilage in between, so they provide limited movement. We call this amphiarthrosis. Amphimian, like the amphibian that lives on land and in the sea. You move like this, you move like this. Amphi. Then we have the synovial joint, wide range of movement. We call them diarthroses because dia means complete. That's why we call it diagnosis. Have you heard of the word agnostic? Agnostic is a person who doesn't know knowledge and know. Gnosis, gnosia means knowledge and dia means complete. So when you tell your patient, sir, I have my diagnosis, you have prostate cancer, you better be sure about what you're talking about. Don't say, I suspect. No, if you suspect it, run some tests. When you provide the diagnosis to the patient, you better be completely knowledgeable and, knowledgeable and sure about what the flip you're talking about. Okay? Okay. Back to our synovial joints. Most extremities, okay, your shoulder joint, your hip joint, your knee joint, etc. Costovertebral, temporomandibular, or TMJ. And we'll talk about this later in this rheumatology playlist. 
So completely separated bones, they have cartilage, they have ligament, they have everything you need. What's the type of cartilage in this bone? And the answer is hyaline cartilage or hyaline, depend on where you live. Let's talk about the joint. Here's a bone, here is a bone. Here's the articular surface of the bone. So it has cancellous bone. However, the shaft of the bone has cortical or compact bone that provides strength. Okay, we got it. So articular surface have the havergent system in histology. We don't want to talk about this, but remember it has type 1 collagen, nice osteocytes and blood vessels in between. Here we have the cartilage. What type? Hyaline cartilage. Okay, articular cartilage here. Epiphyseal cartilage plate here. This is called that metaphysis or the metaphysis. Avascular because cartilage is avascular. Here's your nice synovium or synovial membrane, outer and inner. Outer, it forms the joint capsule, and inner, it forms that synovial lining cell because the synovium goes from here, and then it doesn't stop there, baby. It goes and lines the cartilage from the inside and the other cartilage from the inside and comes back. Same thing as your conjunctiva in your eye. It's the same freaking concept. Get your head out of your sphincter. Don't forget that the osteoblast, they build up bone. But the osteoclast, they cut down bone. It's easier to tear down stuff than to build great civilizations. Osteoarthritis is the same freaking thing as degenerative joint disease. Don't be fooled. Just because it ends in an itis doesn't necessarily mean that's an inflammation. Good, it's not inflammatory. Degeneration of cartilage, breakdown of their matrix, their extracellular matrix and causing structural and functional failure of the synovial joint. It's an intrinsic disease of cartilage, where chondrocytes respond to biomechanical, biochemical and mechanical stress leading to breakdown of their matrix. Okay, two definitions, who cares? Osteoarthritis is the most common joint disease. I do care about this, and it's a disease of the elderly. Don't ever forget that. What's the type of cartilage in the articular surface here? It's hyaline. What's the type of cartilage in the epiphyseal cartilage plate? It's also hyaline. Osteoarthritis is divided into primary osteo and secondary osteo. Primary osteo, unknown cause. We call it idiopathic, the pathology of the idiots. We are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. So there is an unknown cause here. Secondary osteoarthritis, of course we know the cause. We are genius. Causes are several and include joint trauma, congenital defect, developmental defect, and occupational excess load construction workers, for example. What's the difference between congenital and developmental? Congenital, you're born with it. Developmental, while you grow up. Prior inflammatory arthritis, gout. Really? So I can start with an inflammatory arthritis and then end up with a secondary non-inflammatory arthritis? You bet. Also rheumatoid, lupus, and Jogren. Metabolic disorders such as hemochromatosis, Paget disease of bone, not Paget disease of the nipple, not Paget disease of the vulva. Get your head out of, I'm sorry, osteochronosis or alcaptonuria, homogentisic acid oxidase deficiency. The homogentisic acid accumulates in the connective tissue, causing darkening and hyperpigmentation of this tissue, and you can end up with a black nose. I'm not kidding. You know who was the guy who first discovered this disease? Who else? Rudolf Firkow, the famous guy who discovered the Firkow's triad of hypercoagulability, blood stasis, and endothelial damage, and the first guy who first called leukemia, leukemia. He was a hard-working stud. Not those guys sitting in their mother's basement and collecting participation trophies. Next, endocrine disorders, diabetes and acromegaly, collagen defects, Ehlers-Danlos, very stretchy skin, if this is your hand, it's very, you can stretch the skin like this, and I'm not kidding, osteonecrosis, also known as avascular necrosis, and osteoporosis, where your bone has many pores. This deal is about to end. Perfectionals Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases available on patreon.com forward slash medicosis for less than five bucks. Harry, Harry guys, hurry up. Words of wisdom. You take control of that which you can control. Stephen Covey. And this, he was talking about the modifiable risk factors that you can control. Osteoarthritis risk factors, non-modifiable, there's nothing that you can do about it, and modifiable, of course you can do a lot of stuff about it. Age, sex, 
and heredity. So when you have an old patient coming to you, hey, I think I'm old, I have osteoarthritis, there is nothing that I can do about it, honey, honey, there is a lot of stuff that you can do about it and I can help you. You can lose weight, you know, you can, you have to use like 50 pounds and if you lose like blah, 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 if you lose two pounds every month, you will lose 24 pounds a year, which is 48 or 50 pounds in two years. This is nothing. You can do it. You can do it. I can help you. I can show you. I think I'm stuck. There is nothing I can do. Honey, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can exercise. I can knock on your door tomorrow at 6 a.m. We can run together. There's a lot. I want to help you. I think I'm born with bad genes. There's nothing I can do about it. I cannot get ahead. I'm stuck. Honey, please, there's a lot of stuff. If your job hurts, like pick another job, work from home. You have experience for 30 years in this field. You can open a business and teach those young people who doesn't who don't know what the flip they're talking about. You're economically valuable in a world with scarce resources which have alternative uses. There is a lot that you can do. You can minimize trauma. You can stay away from malalignment. So if you are limping, get your joint replaced. If there is a problem, correct it. If there is pain, try to mitigate it. Because you are, if you are malaligned, you can get osteoarthritis. So this is like your car. You know what? When your car is malaligned, you burn out tires. Okay. And if your joints are malaligned, they get osteoarthritis. You degenerate them. Same freaking concept. Examples of malalignment, meniscal injury, because your menisci are very important for your knees. If one of them is injured, you're malaligned. Your car burns out tire. You will burn up joints. What else? Quadriceps weakness, because one of your legs is weaker than the other. One of them is going to bear all of the weight, while the other doesn't. The one that bears all the weight is going to get osteoarthritis. Loss of proprioception. And here's something that will confuse the rheumatologist, but the neurologist will solve it in a heartbeat. Loss of proprioception. Because you cannot feel the joint, you will not put any weight on it. If you won't put any weight on it, the other joint is going to suffer, called osteoarthritis, a degenerative joint disease. And of course, I'm sure your professor didn't tell you that. That's why he's a professor. He's not a famous YouTuber like me. Because everything on the internet is true, said Abraham Lincoln. Epidemiology. Everybody is at risk. However, more people, some people are at more risk than others. It's more common in the elderly than the young. More common in women than men. More common in blacks than white. Why? I have no idea. Except osteoarthritis of the hand is more common in whites than blacks. Why? I didn't know the first one. Why do you expect I will know the next one? I have no clue. If you love mnemonics, try Picmonic. They are not a sponsor of this video, but the link is in the description. I love these guys. Their website is robust. They have great medical mnemonics, especially about pharmacology, microbiology, genetic diseases, and stuff like that. In the next video, we'll talk about pathogenesis or pathophysiology of osteoarthritis. So please subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have 99 plus cases there. Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and please support this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.